Greeting to, uh, to all. First of all, I'd like to welcome all of you to the 11th International Conference on Business, Economics, Law, Language and Psychology 2021. Okay, my name is Dr. Azman. I'm from Malaysia. And today, I'll be talking about challenges in dealing with Gen Z in the case of online learning during COVID-19 pandemic. Okay? And there are basically three uh, important elements when it comes to this talk I'm going to be delivering. Okay, one is the uh, pandemic itself. Number two is the Gen Z uh, characteristics. And number three, the online learning. I am not going to be able to teach, uh, to touch on detail about this because uh, of the time limit. Okay, so I'll just go briefly on that. Okay, uh, COVID-19 pandemic started in the, year, uh, in the beginning of the year 2020, whereby it started with one case in Wuhan and then it spread globally and to date. Millions have died due to this, um, I don't know what I call it, virus. And so far, uh, we don't, we, even though we have vaccine, but still we have not been able to effectively you know, curb the spread of uh, COVID-19. So due to this, uh, we have to actually adopt to this situation and therefore we have to coin new, what we call the new norm in order to make our, uh, our life uh, as normal as possible, okay? And now Gen Z. Gen Z is a group of gen, uh, is a group of people which comprise of a generation. And throughout the humankind history, we have had a few generations. We have, we have the uh, baby boomers. We have the Generation X. Uh, now gen, uh, the millennia, and Gen Z. And of course, uh, later they say it's Alpha Generation. Okay. So basically, the characteristics of Gen Z they are all about technology. This, this, this generation, they are born with technology and they are uh, tech savvy people and they are inclined towards using technology, especially computer. And they are, this is uh, the, the, the group that now we call netizen, right? They, everything has to be online, everything has to be made public, everything has to be on social media, right? So this is what uh, uh, one of the characters of Gen Z, okay? And on top of they are so technological inclined, they are also a group of people that enjoy other people's company. Due to this internet connectivity, we can see now uh, countries around the world are now closely knitted. That's why we call it the global village nowadays. So people can simply get connected with other people from other uh, continents in the world. We may have friends from America, um, an Asian can have friends in America, an American, uh, an Asian can have a friends in China and all that, right? So you can see that is what it's all about. They enjoy the other people's companionship. On top of having, um, enjoying the uh, company of other people, they are very competitive, okay? This is due to, I see, when, when the thing is too big, people want to sort of to be able to be the first to get something. So they are very competitive, okay? So that is why you can see now, the world is very competitive to this, due to this generation because they are now the generation that is uh, spearheading the future, okay? So there's no doubt, in the future will be more, even more competitive than it is today. And one more thing, Gen Z, they welcome changes. They really like to go about making changing here and there. And to a certain extent, we can see they are very fickle-minded in making decisions. It's not just fickle-minded, but they have to actually keep in touch with the changes that is actually taking place at the moment. But more aligned with the technological or computing uh, de rapid development, we can see things are changing rapidly. So that's why they have to actually keep abreast with the changes. So they are a group of people that welcome change openly. And the other thing is that Gen Z, they do not register diversity. What it means by that is that Regardless of who you are, what you are, which country are you from, what national are you, uh, are you they do not sort of uh, make a big uh, issue of it. For them, it is all uh, people of the world. Yeah, the people of the world means that whether you are an American, whether you are an Indian, whether you are Malaysian, Singaporean, Chinese, Chinese and all that, you are still the people of the world. So they do not register diversity. They say everything is about the togetherness, okay? And of course, with the connectivity, with the uh, net networking throughout the global communication, they prefer independence. They are very, very independent, whereby they would like to sort of 
uh, feel free of doing whatever they want to do. Therefore, they do not want to be sort of succumb to any law and regulation which are very strict, okay? And hence, to that independence, they really want to be heard. So whatever they say, they want people to hear them, okay? And for them, this is how they go about making the change that they always welcome, okay? So you can see now, Gen Z uh, or Gen Z uh, characteristics are very, very uh, fluid in the sense that it's very dynamic, okay? And the other element in the research is, or the, the talk today is on the online learning. Due to the pandemic, we have to, you know, uh, live with the new norm. Therefore, online learning has become very popular because last time it is only a part and partial of learning, but today it is the learning process itself because of this is the best way to actually uh, try to break the chain of the uh, virus and at the same time still be connected with the teaching and learning process. Okay, So online has become popular because it is potential, because it's potential for providing more flexible access to content and instruction at any time, anywhere. Basically, that's what the philosophy of online teaching is all about, accessibility of uh, teaching material anytime, anywhere. So since the requirement of online teaching and learning has been, has to be implemented at its fullest capacity, the research uh, focus on exploring the issues and challenges faced by the students in embracing new online uh, teaching and learning norm. Okay, because of now with the new norm, we have to actually look into what are the uh, problems that the students face because we do not know how long will this pandemic uh, end or last. So at least we are able to make sure that the teaching and learning situation will still go on, the teaching and learning process will still go on, and at the same time, will still benefit the students, even though it is not the conventional teaching method. Okay, from the research, we found out that from a, a number of 337 respondents, responded on the Google form that we posted on the internet, most of the students, okay, say, uh, the most benefit they reap from online teaching is there's no traveling. Okay, they do not have to travel. They have to. They can stay at one place, yet they can be educated. They can learn. They can be examined or all that in terms of their performance, in terms of teaching and learning. Okay, so no traveling because of there's no uh, requirement to do so. And what more, they have to be away from other people. Okay, this is actually the main philosophy of online teaching and learning, as accessible anytime and as mentioned just now. And of course, when there's no traveling, they will save time in terms of learning. Students do not have to rush here and there just to get to be physically you know, present in a class. They do not have to um, catch the bus. They do not have to rush for uh, time and all that. They do not have to rush for from their home to their uh, college or the classes or from their hostel to the classes and all that. So this will tend to save a lot of time. And this time can be actually uh, safe to learning, okay? And of course, no traveling, save time, therefore this is very convenient to them. For them, online learning is very convenient to them to actually uh, uh, be more actively involved in the learning process itself. And of course, on top of those three, the, this is the best solution to break the virus change thus far. Okay, because the best solution is to create your distance from the another person. So social distancing is the best way, uh, the best solution for breaking the change of this virus. And of course, by being away from physical presence from, uh, uh, to the classroom, this is what the students are doing, breaking the change of the virus. Okay. But on top of that, there are drawbacks. Okay. Uh, among of the drawbacks that the student uh, recorded would be difficult to understand what is being taught. This is basically uh, related closely to the connectivity issue, speed connection, speed of connection and location. Because once a student is located in a sub uh, in the rural area or outback area, you can see this connectivity issue is there. Connectivity issue is there because there might not be good infrastructure in terms of uh, internet infrastructure. Okay, the signal is not very strong; it's very poor. So with that, speed is another question. So when speed is another problem, and what more, even in in in, in the uh, urban area or the the city. When a lot of people going into one channel at one go, you can see speed also is going to be a problem. So this is this will lead to the learn the, the uploading and downloading of learning material will be uh, will not be done smoothly. So it will sort of distort 
okay, the flow of the information which needs to be taught or the material. Therefore, it will lead to difficulty in understanding what is trying to be taught by the teacher or the teacher lecturers to the students. Okay. The other thing is that a student says it is difficult to work in groups because of they are not able to com to complete uh, the group project because they are all scattered around in different places. Okay. I will try to keep, cut it short because of the time frame. Okay. And the other thing is more additional work to be done because of there's no more time. They cannot spend a lot of time together physically because everything has to be online. And when it comes to online, you talk about data. Right? Once you use all the data, you cannot. Uh, what? You, yeah, there, there are limitations to the, uh, the, the amount of data that you can use. So again, with that, they have to do extra work because their friends are not there to help them physically. Okay, and of course, in the end, self-discipline. They have to discipline themselves to be present in the class punctually. Okay, because sometimes being at home, complacent with all the things that they have, it's going to be difficult to be present. You know, physically online. And most of the students say it is very complicated, difficult, and troublesome. This is actually related to uh, the reason of speed, connectivity, and also location just now. Even though they say it is difficult, difficult, uh, complicated, and troublesome, still, they say it is a very interesting uh, experience because these people, they like challenge. Okay, so the bigger the challenge, the better they become probably, or the interesting it will become to them. So uh, even though it's going to be very difficult, that for them it's not an issue. In terms of learning experience itself, they felt it was not more effective. It means that if you were to compare uh, conventional learning method and online, <coughs> excuse me, online method, more they are, it is more or less the same. Both are more or less the same. Okay, because for them, online learning does not foster good communication between students and lecturers because of there's no physical, actual physical communication, human interaction. So for them, it is only a, a an artificial communication. Whereby in a classroom, there should be a good communication between the teacher and lecturer because when it comes to physical face-to-face, -face, a teacher should be able to actually judge whether the student understands fully or, or not whatever is being taught, okay, by looking at the facial expression. But if you were to talk about teaching online, it's going to be difficult to do that. And the other thing is that due to that, online teaching fails to meet the individual learning needs as the lecturer will not be able to see the students personally, okay. Uh, Therefore, on top of what has been said, we can assume that the students prefer the regular teaching setting, which is a conventional setting. But yet, if it were to be an online, they say it would be they prefer something which is delayed or pre-recorded or asynchronous lecture so that they can assess it whenever they have time without any pressure. Okay? And uh, for them, it is best to have both approaches to make sure that the learning experience is more effective. For them also, uh, online classes should also should only be for discussion and tutorial to, uh, to confirm the understanding or misunderstanding of what they have learned. Uh, even though they say uh, it is not that uh, what, uh, positive, but they still uh, praise the lecturers for doing their best to help the students to make it a very uh, beneficial experience uh, to learn. On the whole, students are satisfied with the online, online learning, even though they do not reject the whole idea totally. Okay, and it, ref, it prefers a very strong uh, sense of uh, self-discipline in order to make sure they are able to really uh, enjoy the learning online process. So, in the end, um, they are not. We can see that based on the data or whatever being mentioned or being 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 uh, shared. Respondents do not favor online learning, but they do not reject the idea totally. At the moment, this is the best way for them to be educated because of the pandemic situation. And the future of online uh, learning and teaching lies heavily on the effectiveness or efficient, uh, the, uh, the effectiveness and uh, efficiency of the students and lecturers adopting to this new norm. And of course, the government has to improve uh, infrastructure for internet infrastructure for connectivity and accessibility to the public and lastly change is something that is dynamic and this group are open to change so therefore we have to be able to make sure that we are able to adopt ourselves to changes that will come in the future so with that I hope uh, every uh, whatever I have shared will be
has actually been able to give you some insight at the back of your mind when you go back to your country of these are probably the problems that the students might face when you may want to start online classes okay so with that i hope uh, you have had a very uh, my my presentation has been a very fruitful and informative one to help you to uh, go back and 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 present better with online learning and as, as i see Many papers are actually talking about online learning uh, during this pandemic because at the moment, this is the thing, okay? And this is the norm that we are now trying to adopt, make it as something that we are able to uh, do without any problem or glitches, okay? So with that, I thank you uh, for inviting me. Hopefully, this uh, conference will be a very fruitful and interesting one. Good day. Thank you very much.